The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... find many references to children. It is written, Out of the mouths of babes, we are told a little child shall lead them. Is it because perhaps the very young have the clearest vision? Unspoiled and unschooled, they turn their eyes toward the truth, as indeed most of us did until we learn such grown-up words as prudence, discretion, and caution, and how to play such grown-up games as don't stick your neck out, don't make waves, Don't rock the boat. No, I don't want your money. Who said anything about money? You did. It's in your mind. I'll give her $50,000. That's what you're about to say, isn't it? How do you know I was thinking that? I know. I know everything you're thinking. I know it even before you do. I can see it form and develop in your mind. It's incredible. Yes. Now get out of here before I call the police. Our mystery drama, The Conversion Factor, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Norman Rose and Jada Rowland. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. depends on how you look at things. Primitive man and woman knew that certain plants and the bark from particular trees had curative properties. And so we moderns take their foxglove and cinchona and convert them to digitalis and quinine. For years it was felt that moldy cheese could somehow alleviate the infection in wounds. So today we have antibiotics. And so it goes. We have spent the last 50,000 years developing a science and a technology that becomes ever more complicated. Now, it appears, we shall have to reverse the process. If we wish to survive, we may have to do what Henry David Thoreau advised, which is simplify. Simplify. Here we are at one of those truck stop cafes just off a major highway. The girl taking cash is very young, very slender... She has very large and very deep blue eyes. That's $5.13, Tom. Hey, who told you my name was Tom? That's for me to know and you to find out. Uh, Wait, now, how'd you know the check is $5.13? He says so, don't it? Hmm. It only says what I ate. I just added it up. When did you add it up? Just now. But I just handed it to you. When did you have time to have? How much time do you need? Well, I know I need more time than you do. Seems like you don't need no time at all. Well, if you don't believe it's right. Wait, wait, uh, how did you know my name was Tom? It is, ain't it? Now, don't they teach you not to say ain't in high school? I already graduated from high school. Whew, they sure graduate them young these days. How do you know how young I am? Well, how'd you know my name is Tom? That'll be five dollars thirteen cents. You know, I'll be thinking about that every mile of the road. <laughs> Good night, Darlene. Darlene, you want to take a little break, honey? No, I'll help you clean up, Mama. Yeah. Oh, he's a good-looking young fella. I suppose. Uh, Darlene, honey, you want to be careful about men in general and truck drivers in particular. I ought to know. I married three of them. Yes, Mama. What's the matter, honey? I just wish... I just wish I had something to be careful about. What kind of thing is that to say? Well, they don't... Any of them notice me. That is not true. I can tell by the way they talk to you. They like you. What I mean is, they don't notice me as as a woman. Ah. Well, that'll come. When? I'm already 17. It's really nothing to worry about, baby. Baby. That's what I still am, a baby. And I don't want to go to college. Darlene, 
How did you know I was I was thinking of that? Well, you were, weren't you? Oh. If this just don't go ahead and beat all. You know, it, it just come into my mind. I just happen to be thinking to myself, this business is so good, why I can afford to send my little girl to college. But how, how did you know I was thinking that? Well, I know, Mama. Lots of times it seems I got something on my mind and I want to talk to you about it. Before I can say a word, you bring it up. Or, or is it just my imagination? I couldn't say. Anyhow, you think about college, honey. Ah, oh, now, now look look over there in, in the booth by the window. Somebody left something on the bench. I get it. It looks like a briefcase, don't it? It's what they call an attache case. Oh, well, bring it here, hon. Hey, now, that's real fine-looking leather. <laughs> Who could have left it? I, I, is it locked? No, it opens. Oh, wouldn't it be something if there was a million dollars inside there? Or diamonds. Now, things like that just don't happen. Oh, don't say that. They happen all the time. In the movies. Oh, I just hope there ain't any drugs in there. There's nothing in here but some papers. Th that's all? Yes, Mama, that's all. No name, no address? Nothing. It just looks like a dozen sheets of paper. Huh, let me see. Here. And every single one of them seems to be covered with numbers. Oh, and here's some letters scattered around. It what are these squiggly and strange-looking things, do you suppose, Darlene? It looks like mathematics. You mean arithmetic? It looks like everything. Arithmetic, algebra, so on and so forth. <laughs> An expensive-looking case like this, and all you got inside is just some pieces of paper with arithmetic on them? <laughs> I wish we could return it to the gentleman that left it here. Oh, well, we'll just hold on to it. I'm sure he'll be by to claim it. Dr. Lanners, uh, come in, come in. Thank you, Mr. Carson. Well, how was the trip? It was all right. Blood and flight? I didn't fly, I drove. Hmm. All the way from New Mexico? I needed the time to think. About what? About everything. What is everything, doctor? About you asked for this meeting. I know. Well, suppose you begin. Well, I'm not sure I know how. Well, <clears throat> let me begin by saying uh, you look terrible. Yes, I'm sure I do. I'm nervous, I'm irritable, I fly off the handle. My entire department is in a state of chaos. Uh, is this the kind of admission you should be making to the chairman of the board? I am a scientist. I state the facts. As a businessman, I can appreciate that. However, Mr. I... Carson, I know everything you're going to tell me. Oh, I do I'm you? working too hard, I'm pressing too much. You are? You know why? Because I am at the end of the trail. And what does that mean? I have spent five years of my life and $20 million of your money. And do you know what I have to show for it all? Twelve sheets of paper. Yes, well, to begin with, take a few weeks off, you know, a month, and then... And perhaps see a psychiatrist. Huh? No, I didn't say that. But if you think you'd need one... Uh... You're an extremely benevolent employer, Mr. Carson. Oh, now, now, don't talk that way. I know. Never say die, huh? Right. Don't give up the ship. It may sound cliche and corny. You call it old-fashioned. But it works. Sometimes. Ah, uh... I have come to the end of the trail. Then hack out a new one. Uh, I can't. No, why not? Mr. Carson, do you know what research is? Well, I hope so. I pay for enough of it. You blaze a trail through a dark and mysterious jungle. Your tools are the accumulated wisdom of the human race to date. Science. Science is what we have learned, what we know, where we stand. At this moment... Well? At this moment, we do not have the light to penetrate further or the tools to hack our way deeper. In short, sir, I have run out of knowledge. Go out and buy it. Oh, it doesn't exist. No, you can buy anything. Can you buy Albert Einstein? Uh, mention someone who's alive. I don't know of anyone who's alive today who can do what Einstein did. When he came to the end of knowledge, he was able to go beyond it. How? Oh. You know how. He invented an entire new knowledge. A new mathematics. And uh, that's what you need? Exactly. Well, there could be another Einstein out there. Somewhere. Of course. But how do we find him? Until we do, and we may never. I've come here to tell you that the present research direction of the company has arrived at a dead end. I see. I came to prepare you. The board of directors will have to be informed. 
Yes, yes. They will have to be told that Project 119 is still on the drawing board. Still in its highly theoretical stages. And is likely to remain there indefinitely. Ah, uh, that's the verdict, huh? Yes, sir. As you put it, that's the verdict. Man, we don't have to be hanged. And there's a way of presenting these things. It has to do with uh, batting averages, percentages, risk factors. Oh, we can certainly survive it. We can even we can even make it look like a positive game. I am not concerned with that. I am, and you should be. Project 119 was something that I believed in. I should hope so. I spent the better part of my life working on things I hated. The bomb, for instance. You had a duty to your country. Oh, I understand. I know the arguments. I even agree. But the fact is, I was using my knowledge to create havoc, destruction. But Project 119... This was directed at life, not death. Doctor, why don't we go to lunch? I believe can... in Project 119. And it has been denied to me. It's a... Well, it's a promised land, and I'm not being allowed to enter. Is it because I don't have clean hands? Doctor, listen to me. Uh, we can get you more time and more money, more resources. But I told you, that is not the problem. This isn't just a temporary setback. Well, then forget it for a while. Uh, maybe you can come back with a fresh approach. Oh, look, let me explain it to you. I have all my notes. Now, you are too close to it. Sometimes you just have to get away from the problem. I want you to understand. No, no, no. First, we'll have lunch. But this is more important than lunch. Oh, no, nothing is more important than lunch. But I, myself, I eat very little. But there is discipline. A self-discipline, doctor. One does not sacrifice oneself to one's job. Mr. Carson, you don't understand. But I do. You see, you miss lunch and then dinner. Then anniversaries and birthdays. And before you know it, you're married to the job. It has become your wife, your children. And because you've given it so much, you expect it to give everything back. But it doesn't. It's, it can't. But this is not what I am talking it about. It is. Now, for years, you've been living almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the laboratory. Now, to what end? Now, for what purpose? Mr. Carson, just let me show you why... You I... have to learn to relax. Now... What would you like to do? I have a fantastic chef in my dining room. Uh, Miss Baron, tell Pierre I'm having a guest for lunch. It's all here in my attache case. Yes, thank you. Well, now, Doctor. My, my, my attache case. No, I bet you don't get very much exercise. My attache case, I don't have it. It's, it's gone. It's gone. Gone. I lost it. It had everything in it, and, and I lost it. How could I lose it? Where did I lose it? Did he lose it? We could tell him. But it's a better story if he finds out for himself. Well, Mama fantasized for a moment. Suppose there was a million dollars in that case. Or maybe diamonds. It would take much more than a million dollars and quite a few perfect diamonds to equal the value of those 12 pieces of paper. Even though there aren't a hundred people in the whole world who would understand what they say. I'll be back shortly. With Act Two. We forget because we must, not because we will, so says the poet. I'm afraid he's in conflict with the psychiatrist who insists that we forget because we want to. Yes, we forget the unpleasant, the painful, the inconvenient, and the intolerable. It is for one of these reasons that we have a story. Because it was for one of these reasons that a man forgot an attaché case in a roadside cafe. You... you lost your attaché case, Doctor? It's gone. It's gone, I tell you. All right. All right. We have established that. Uh, now, think. Clearly. Where? Where? It has the notes. The results of five years of research. Twenty million dollars. Dr. Lanners, just sit oh. back for a moment. Now, compose yourself. Relax. How can I relax? I have to find my attaché case. Oh, wait a minute. Where are you going? Dr. Lanners! Doctor! Hey, Miss Baran. Dr. Lanners is about to leave the building. You tell Jack Olmstead to put a man on him right away. Oh. Well, now, Darlene, here's my check. Six dollars and forty cents out of ten. Yeah, <laughs> beats me how you do that and so fast. Oh, wait a minute. You dropped something out of your wallet. Huh? What? Looks like a picture. It must have fallen down behind my stand here. I'll get it. 
Oh. Is she a friend of yours? Uh, it's my girl, Sarah Jean. Can you say she's pretty? Not particularly. Well, let me tell you something, Darlene. You should be as pretty as her when you grow up. I'm grown up now. How, how did you know my name was Tom? And here's your change. 360. Uh, <laughs> good, good night, Darlene. Night. Well, I see that one's back again. <laughs> I hate him. He thinks I'm a baby. He's got the ugliest girlfriend. Oh, I know what he wants. Oh, honey, you'll find all men want the same thing. I'm talking about the man walking in the door right now. Oh, which one? See him? Kind of tall, thin, gray hair where he's not bald. Oh, oh, him. <laughs> he looks hungry. He's got a fire going on inside him. What do you say, him? Oh, oh no. Darlene, honey, what's wrong? He's, he's burning me up. The flames are shooting in all directions. Mama, don't you feel it? Honey, you want me to call a doctor? No. No, I'll be all right. I told you. I know what he wants. That'll put the fire out. Mister? Mister? Do you want to come over here? Darlene, you've got to tell me. It'll be all right. Your face is so flushed, you're all perspired. I'll be all right in just a minute. Uh, miss, did, did you call me? Yes. Yes, everything is all right. Darlene, what's happened to you? Mm. Hey, you, mister. What have you done to my little girl? Oh, I haven't done anything. The minute she saw you, she... Mama, please. Here. This is what you're looking for. Oh. Oh, my head is shaking. Oh. oh, what a relief. Oh, yes. Yes, what a relief. Johnny, now you're so, so pale all of a sudden. I'm all right, Mama. Oh, thank you, miss. Thank you so much. Uh, madam, are you the manager, the owner? Yes, but I... I can't tell you how grateful, how indebted I am to you and to your daughter. Here. Oh, it's all right. Now, I would like to reward... Oh, no, no. Oh, please. It's all right. Even though you have plenty of money. I'll never forget you both. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Darlene. How did you know the man has plenty of money? I'm sure I don't know. Uh, I guess you could make that assumption from the kind of attaché case he has, but still... Honey, there are times you sure do scare me. He doesn't have a conversion factor. A what? A conversion factor. Now, what does that mean? I know what it means. But I can't explain it. Yeah, whatever it is, how do you know that gentleman doesn't have it? Because that's where it all stops. Yeah? Well, where what all stops? On the papers. Those papers. In his attaché case. Oh, I give up. <laughs> I guess you were a different child from the very beginning. Different? What do you mean by different? Different in what way? Well, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's the way you can do that arithmetic. All the numbers in your head. And how there are times when you know exactly what a person is thinking. And it's true. I'm different. I'm not like other girls. Oh, yes, you are. You are. You just said I was different. Well, I didn't mean it that way. In any way that might be bad or peculiar. Maybe that's why I don't have a boyfriend. Oh, honey. Mom, I don't want to be different. Everything will be all right. You don't really mean that. I do, child, I do. Then why are you saying to yourself, Good Lord, I'm scared. Why is my daughter so different? Why are you saying that, Mama? Oh, mean, honey. How can you even imagine a thing like that? Where you're just like any other girl. No, Mom, I'm not. What you're really thinking is, she has this, this problem. Well, I don't see it like a problem. I consider it a gift, a blessing. And that's the reason a boy won't look at her. Really look. Because he's scared. Why? Why are you scared, Mama? Now, baby, you've been working very hard and keeping some long hours. Look, you take tonight off and just go to a movie. It would be so nice if some fella asked me. Remember me? Yeah. You're the gentleman with the attaché case. I've been looking for you. Oh? Why? You know why. No. No, I don't. Do you deny that you have ESP? I don't even know what that means. Extra sensory perception. Let us say the ability to read someone's thoughts. Oh. You do have it to a degree. I may have it, but I don't like it. Why not? Because it gives you a headache. Sometimes 
It makes me feel like I'm burning up inside. I see. Uh, look, we can't talk here. Talk? What is there to talk about? This is something very important. To who? To both of us. How could it be important to me? It could be worth $50,000. $50,000? Yes. That's what you're saying. I can feel it. Then you know I'm telling you the truth. I know you're saying I could make $50,000. I... I don't know if it's the truth. It's time to get a headache. I know. It's my fault. I, I shouldn't be so excited. I'll try to be calm. You want me to do something? Yes. And for that, you'll get $50,000. What is there that I could do that would be worth $50,000 to anybody? Well, it's something... It's something you know. I know something that's worth all that money? Mister, excuse me saying so. But you're crazy. Darling, listen to me. No. Please, get away from me. Just listen. Mister, I don't know what you've got in mind, but I don't want any part of it. I'm serious. Just up the block. You can see. It's a police car. Darlene, give me a chance to explain. I'll give you a chance to get out of here. If you don't just walk away, I'm going to call to those police. Uh, Mr. Carson? Come in, Miss Moran. Oh. Well, I, I have a verbal report from one of Jack Olmstead's men. The one who's shadowing Dr. Lannan. Yes? Well, he says that Lannan got onto the interstate... And drove about 17 miles south and west. Yes, yes. He pulled in at one of those truck stops, went inside, and there was a young girl at the cash register. She had his attaché case. A young girl? Oh, she could be 15, 16, 17. And, and then what? Well, he took the attaché case back to his car. He sat for a while and looked through it, and then he started back to town. Then he, he suddenly turned around and headed back to the truck stop. Well, why would he do that? Well, he went inside. Jack's detective must know how to read lips. Lana asked the girl's mother, who was at the register for the girl. She told him her daughter had gone to a movie in Charlesburg. Well, that's where Dr. Lanner's headed. He waited for her to come out of the picture show, and then he accosted her. Accosted? Well, that's the word the detective used. Anyhow, they started talking. He wanted her to do something. Said it would be worth $50,000. Lanner said this? He, he must have frightened her. She threatened to call the police. And then, then she just ran away from him. Lanners wants to give a little teenage girl $50,000. Lanners? Well, till today I would have staked my life on Lanners. Uh, is he still being jailed? Yes, sir. Well, keep it up. 24 hours a day. Seven days a week till we can get to the bottom of it. <laughs> Darling, I want to talk to you. I know you do. You know why? I... Yes. It's about that... That thing you had that always lets you know what someone's thinking. It isn't always, Mama. It's only when somebody's very excited and terribly nervous I can feel something. And I don't like it. That, that gentleman. You know the one. Yes. Well, he wants to give you $50,000. Please, Mama. I'm scared. It won't do any harm to talk to him. Just talk. I don't want to. Honey, he's a highly respectable person. He's a doctor. I don't care. He's not one of the medical doctors. One of them science doctors. Here's his card. Here, see? Frederick Lanners, Ph.D., Chief of Research, Universal Industries. Please, Mama. Universal Industries. Where they make this cash register. This is the refrigerator. Meet the oven in the kitchen. Even the dress you're wearing, a million things. I'm not interested, Mama. I want to be in love. I want to have a boyfriend. I want to be like other girls. Baby, you're not like other girls. You mean I'm different. You're better. How am I better? But, for instance, this thing you've got inside you that lets you know what other people are thinking, that makes your brain work so fast. Please, Mama. Your Aunt Madeline. The crazy one. No, no, no. She wasn't crazy. She was. When she was a girl, they said she was crazy. No, honey. No, she, she was my little sister. I ought to know. You're like your Aunt Madeline. She always knew what folks were thinking. She had this, this marvelous thing in her head, just like yours. It isn't marvelous. Not if it makes me different. And then one day, it disappeared. This thing she had in her head, this marvelous thing, it just disappeared. It, it went away. How? Well... She figured it out. Later, she told me it was because she fell in love. Love? Yes, real love. What you've got in your head is very strong. 
there isn't room for both things inside you. That's what Madeline told me. When love came into her being, the other thing, I guess, was driven out. I'd rather be in love. Well, at least have the courtesy to find out what he wants. I'm here only because Mama insisted. Darlene, why do you resist the idea of becoming rich? This $50,000 is only the beginning. Don't get angry. When people get angry, it gives me a headache. Don't you want to make this world a better place to live in? What kind of question is that? Doesn't everybody? No, not everybody. But that's not the point. The fact is, you do. Darlene, I don't even know how to explain it. And I'm guessing, but... The fact is, you know how to change the way we're all going to live. Why do you say that? Well, here in my attaché case, all my notes. You opened this case, didn't you? I, well, I thought I could find a name to tell me who owned it. It's all right. But then you examined the papers, didn't you? I looked at them, yes. Yeah. And Darlene, you understand what's written in here, don't you? Yeah. The math, the physics, the level... Oh, Darlene, it's incredible. How? Where did you learn? Learn? I guess I always knew. Look at the bottom of the last sheet of paper. You made this notation, didn't you? Just something you scribbled down. I don't remember. You wrote these three words. No conversion factor. Like I said, I, I don't remember. No conversion factor. Darlene... What does it mean? What does it mean? Please, you're giving me a headache. Tell me. You must tell me. <laughs> My head. Tell me. No, go away. Tell me or I'll... I, I... Let me alone. <clears throat> Let me alone. And we shall, for just a few moments. The conversion factor. What is the conversion factor? And what about this teenager who seems to be as familiar with physics as her contemporaries might be with rock stars. And what about this internationally acclaimed scientist who is begging her for guidance? We have considerable ground to cover in Act Three. The beginning of wisdom is in the cradle, says the Greek philosopher. For here, the child encounters light and dark, food and love, joy and sorrow, and are not all these things the sum total of our lives? Well, probably. But the question is not really where does wisdom begin, but where does wisdom end, and why? Let me alone! I will. Darling, I will. Just, just tell me, please, what is the conversion factor? I can't tell you. Why not? You know what it is. You do, don't you? Yeah. Well, then tell me, please. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. All right, do you know why I'm asking? Yeah. Then shouldn't that make a difference to you? Shouldn't that prove that I don't mean you any harm? I, I know that. What I want is for the good of everyone, everywhere in the world. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what to say. We, we scientists, we have a theory... And we express it in mathematics and physics and chemistry. Create a formula to build a, a machine or a device. But, well, this is different. I know. You, Darlene. You are the personification of my theory. You, a human being. But you are the origin, the genesis. I really wish you would leave me alone. Darlene, this world, it's overworked. It's overtired. And do you know why? Don't shout. You see, we have forgotten the genesis. Do you know what that is? No. It's the sun. I still can't tell you why. The conversion factor, Darlene. Try to explain it, can't you? I told you. I keep telling you. I don't know how. You understand everything that is written in my papers. How? I just do, that's all. Tell me how. Maybe I don't understand it. But you just said that you... I feel it. What? You feel it? Look, when you feel warm, how do you explain warm? How do you explain cold? If you were blind, how could I explain to you what a color was? How could I make you see it? Try it. 
try somehow to explain the conversion factor. The conversion factor. Begin by telling me, where did you get the name? I don't know. You made it up, didn't you? It... Well... You see, you have to make a conversion. Do you understand? But what do you convert? Yes. You have to look at things as conversion factors. Well, tell me which things. Any kind of thing. You feel thirsty, okay? You don't want to feel thirsty. So, how do you get from feeling thirsty to not feeling thirsty? You drink a glass of water. Yeah. So, water is a conversion factor. But what does this have to do with my notes, with what I'm working on? But there's a... There's a pile. Well, it's a... Uh, a source? Yeah. Yeah, of energy. It exists, but... But it's locked up. It, it isn't working for you. Yes, yes. And now you need that conversion factor. But where do I find it? Where? Yes, where? How? How do I express it in a formula? You can. Oh, Darlene, you must help me. I guess you said it yourself. Just before, you said I was the personification, the, the genesis. I guess it's all a way of saying that I'm a conversion factor myself. Of course. I know, but how do you do it? I have to keep telling you. I don't know. I just don't know. But inside you is the secret. I don't like the sound of that. Darlene, it's true. And there's something skirting around the, the edge of your brain. No. Oh, no. It was just a, a stupid, inane, impossible idea. It was very strong. That's why I felt it. But you can't help those crazy things that flip through your mind sometimes. You wanted to kill me. No, 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 no. After all, what happened when they killed the goose that laid the golden eggs? Darlene, if you were dead, everything vital and alive and important would die with you. Oh, please, Darlene, Darlene, help me. Darlene, you about through here? Yes, Mama. Well, what do you think of Dr. Lana's idea? I don't know yet. I can get $50,000 from my company. You hear that? It will be deposited to your account. All you have to do is allow me to study you, analyze you. Without touching her, of course. Well, there may be various testing instruments, such as electrocardiograms and the like. But I'm going to be present at all times. Darlene, what do you say? Now, honey, what can you lose? <laughs> Won't you sit down, Dr. Lana? Thank you. I received your message, and here I am. Miss Durand, Dr. Lana, how formal. And yet I know you so very well. Do you? Miss Durand, may I ask the purpose of... You could be in trouble, Dr. Lana. The kind of trouble you cannot hope to surmount. What's between you and this little teenage girl? What are you saying? Detectives are watching your every move. Oh, no, no. No, is that what it looks like? Well, what's your story? Miss Moran, what do you know about Project 119? I know we are trying to create a system which will use the sun as the sole source of energy. Yes, and? Not just mechanical and technical energy for all heat and power and fuel, but I guess you could say personal energy. That's right. But we're stuck. You're stuck. You know everything about this energy except how to unleash it and control it. Not anymore. You see, I know the next step. But you told Mr. Carson you'd come to the end. The next step is this teenage girl, this Darlene. What are you trying to tell me? She is one of those people who have already done it. She's doing it in a primitive, elementary way, but she's doing it. She has taken the next step. Well, then she must be brilliant. She must have a superior intelligence. No. She's just an ordinary, run-of-the-mill teenage girl who moons over whoever the latest rock and roll star happens to be. Well, then how could she possibly... Listen to me. Do you think evolution is a matter of intelligence? Sometimes it's instinct, an accident, 
a random coming together of a certain pattern of genes. But look at what she knows how to do. She doesn't know how to do it. She just does it. Does a green plant know it must turn toward the sun? No. It does it. And so does she. Without thinking, without knowing how, she uses her mind as a computer, a, a transmitter. So far, she can't direct energy into physical channels. But that will come. But what can you do with her? She is a conversion factor, which is what all of us will one day become. Now, right now, we have to study her, analyze her. Is she willing? Now, her mother is willing. It will cost $50,000. That's no problem. I'll need the check tomorrow morning. You will have it. <laughs> Hi there, darling. That'll be two dollars and nine cents. Oh, oh, it beats me how you do that. I guess you weren't very hungry today. <laughs> no, no. And it's your fault. My fault? Yeah, on account of you, I I, I can't eat and I, I can't sleep nights. Oh, so, and how about her? What's her name? Sarah Jean, the bleached blonde. I, uh, uh I've lost her. Really? Yeah, and that's also your fault. Is it? Is it? Really? Well, I must say, you're not much good at conversation. <laughs> Anyhow, Sarah Jean walked out on me because all I kept doing was talking about this little old gal in a truck stop on the interstate. Really? Ah, oh, there you go again. Well, anyhow, Sarah Jean said, if you're so stuck on that hassling... Oh, I'm not a hassling. I'm not good enough. I'm only a cashier. Oh, but to get back to Sarah Jean, she said... Since all you ever do is talk about that Darlene, well, why don't you go out with Darlene? Well, why do you want to go out with me anyhow? You just said I'm not much good at conversation. Well, that's all right with me. But I mean, I'd rather do most of the talking myself. <laughs> if you aren't the most conceited stuck-up. I know. But you do like me, don't you? Uh, say, could you excuse us, Tom? Oh, why? Well, sure, Miss Wilson. Well, I, I got to be rolling along anyhow. Ah, uh, see you later, darling. Goodbye, Tom. Darling, are you in love with him? What? I, I don't know. Oh, honey, don't do it. I like him. I like him a lot. Darling, look at me. Look at your mama. I've never been anywhere. I never did anything. I never became anybody. I think you're somebody. Just look at the women in here and in the supermarkets and in the neighborhood. Women worn out with working and children. What are you trying to tell me? Here. Here, honey. In this magazine. Look at these women. Rich, stylish, smart. These women, they write books. They talk on the TV. They do things. Honey, you can be one of these women. I don't know. Or would you rather be with Tom? I feel so good when I'm with Tom. How long will it last? You poor baby. What am I asking you to do? To look ahead? It's beyond me to explain it and beyond you to understand it. But you have explained it and I do understand it. Honey, this gift you got, this ability, this power. It was like your Aunt Madeline. The minute she fell in love, was gone. Mama, please. Don't feel so bad. Love changes something inside you. It makes you different somehow. Why should that be? The inside of a person. His heart, his mind, his soul is a mystery. Why some of us are made one way and others another. Who can figure it out? Oh, honey. We've had enough poor women in this family. You'd be rich. You'll be famous. Mama? Hmm? How do you know if you're in love? Oh, well, you... You feel good. Yeah. You feel warm and happy. Oh, Mama. And you just glow and tingle all over. Oh, what a beautiful world it is. Then I'm in love. I feel so different. So wonderful. Let me think. Think what you're giving up. I'm in love. I'm somebody new. Somebody else. Oh, Darlene. Oh, my goodness. Here comes Dr. Lannis and another gentleman. Uh, Mr. Carson, this is Darlene and her mother. Uh, ladies, may I present Mr. Carson, chairman of the board of Universal Industries? Well, I am so happy to meet you both. Uh, 
Darlene, you are about to become one of the most important human beings in the world. <laughs> but of course, you, uh, you already knew that thought was in my mind. No. No, sir, I, I didn't. But uh, I thought you had ESP. I, I guess I did. But now, I don't seem to have it anymore. Doc, doctor, you, you told me. Darlene. What are you saying? You're a conversion factor. No, sir, not anymore. Now, you look at me. I'm excited, upset. Doesn't that give you a headache? Not anymore. I'm sorry. I can't help. Not now. Uh, doctor, what is happening here? What happened to Darlene? She's not the same girl. No, I guess she's not. Excuse me, please. I have to tell him something. Tom! Tom! Oh, wait a minute! What happened to her? Just look out the window, huh? You see that young fella? He's what's happened to her. Would you mind explaining? That is, if you really know how Gentlemen, to. Gentlemen, there was this marvelous gift she had. She had? And there was love. She couldn't accommodate both of them. She had to choose. Well, you just saw which one she picked. As a position, a, a wealth, a power. He, she gave it all up just for love? Yeah, I guess you could put it that way. Now, uh, why would she want to do a thing like that? Why? If only we knew. What we do know is that the ladies used to do it all the time, and still do, even in these days of liberation. And men, too. How many young men have given up dreams of glory to settle for humdrum jobs to support a wife and kids? They say love is blind, but love also blinds. I shall return shortly. <laughs> So for a while, we have concerned ourselves with the basic moving force of the world, the conversion factor. It's what makes the world turn, or churn, for better or worse. And as you have seen, anything, anyone in the proper place at the right time becomes a conversion factor. In our story, it was a young truck driver named Tom who happened to smile at a girl behind a cash register. And for all we know, may have thereby prevented a great leap forward in science. That's our story. In your story, you are the conversion factor. What have you been converting lately? Our cast included Norman Rose, Jada Rowland, Bryna Rayburn, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next now, these gems, do you generally keep them here in your apartment in a jewel box on your dress? No, I usually have them in the vault. Except tonight, I, I was at a formal dinner and I thought I would... Uh, bring... Do you mind if I use the telephone? No, I don't mind. Thank you. Is it possible he could have seen me and followed me home? I, I understand jewel thieves. Scout, is that the word? Places where wealthy people go. Uh, excuse me. This is Lieutenant Severio. I'm at the Patterson place. Yeah. Oh, he got away with a few nice things. The M.O. fits our old friend, the cat burglar. Yeah, the one who can climb up and down the walls. The cat burglar? Yeah, Jerry. I think he can chalk up another one. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams.